Okay, so motor selection and sizing. So a motor is going to generate torque and it's going to generate uh, motion. So what, the, what things do you need to properly select and size a motor? You need to know your target torque. You need to know your speed requirement. Those are your mechanical outputs. That's what your motor is going to give you. What you're going to give the motor, your mechanical or your electrical inputs are going to be the operating voltage, be it 12, 24, 48, depending on what you have, and current. And it's good to know your max allowable current because that combination of voltage and current, that's going to be the power that goes into the motor. Other things that are useful but not as necessary as those big four, um, you want to know your load inertia because that will tell you how quickly you can accelerate or decelerate your load depending on the force or the torque that the motor can generate. It's good to know something about the motor's function. Um, is it going to be a stop-start application, so it's positioning, or is it going to be a constant velocity application, so you have a low, a mid, and a high speed, so you're controlling speed, but you're not really doing positioning. What's your duty cycle? Is it going to be 100% duty cycle, 50%, 10%? That's going to determine how long your motor is going to be on and how much power you can put in. And, of course, what are your resolution requirements? You may tend towards a hybrid step motor. If you have tighter resolution requirements, you need a smaller step. If your resolution requirements aren't as large, you may tend towards a PM motor. So your number one tool in selecting a motor, once you have that information, is going to be your speed torque curve. That is going to be your thumbprint on how a motor works. So when you look at a typical curve, you're on the Y, you're going to have your torque, you're going to have on your X, you're going to have your speed. Several things are going to be called out, and we'll go through each of them. Your holding torque, your max, and max starting speed, your max running speed, pull out and pull in curves, your slew range and your stop start range. So when we talk about torque, we'll start with detent torque. That's when you have a motor out of the box. When you grab the motor and spin the shaft, it is non-energized. That drag torque, that is detent torque. That's going to be a combination of the friction of the bearings and the magnetic attraction in the motor. Once you energize the motor, you're going to get something called holding torque. So that is the motor, the most amount of torque a motor can generate, and the motor is not moving. So that is... If you're using a brush motor, that is the equivalent of locked rotor torque. So it is the amount, holding torque is the amount of torque you need to break it free or to displace it. So that is going to be the highest torque possible for the motor because all your energy is going to hold it in position. So if you need a torque value higher than holding torque at a dynamic speed, that tells you you may want to go to a different motor. So next you're going to have pull-in torque. Best way to think about that is the highest amount of torque that a motor can generate instantaneously at any given speed. So if you're moving at 200 PPS, that is one um, RPS for 1.8 degree step motor, it will give you a certain amount of torque instantaneously. Pull out torque, that is the highest combination of torque and speed that a motor can generate, but it's not instantaneous. You will have to ramp up to that torque and speed Hold it for your operation and then ramp down. Okay, so you're going to have two different ranges. The stop-start range, that is defined by the edge of the pull-in curve. Under that curve, you can accelerate, stop, reverse your load. You can do anything under that curve, and you do not have to worry about losing a step. The analogy I always like to use is that when you're driving, your tires always have traction. You can accelerate, you can brake, you're never going to have an issue. Your slew range is the area in between the pull and the pull-out curve. So now you can drive, but again, if you're driving very fast and you slam on the brakes, relative to your car, the brakes are going to stop, but you're going to skid. So you can operate in that area, but it's no longer a path-independent function. You have to control a little bit more with your motion profile. And, of course, when you get outside the pull-out curve, that's when something's going to need to change because the pull-out curve is the largest amount of torque and speed possible. So you're going to need to make some type of adjustment. Okay, so what type of adjustments can be made? So the first thing you're going to do in that first input question we ask is about current. Your current is, your torque is proportional to your current. So what we have here are three different curves for exactly the same motor, just with different current values. For instance, this could be 1 amp, this could be 2 amp, this could be 3 amps. So your torque is proportional to your current. 
So as you put more current into the motor, you're gonna get more torque. Of course, there's gonna be a thermal limit, so you can only do this to a certain point. Now, the reason you're gonna see the curves at the end go down is that they're later on, as you go faster and faster, as you're commutating the motor, you're gonna do something, due to something called inductance, your current will eventually go down, and that's why all motors eventually stall at a high enough speed because they start switching, commutating so fast that current doesn't go into the motor. It eventually, the current eventually goes down to zero, so the torque goes down to zero. So as a rule, your torque is always gonna be proportional to your current, so current is gonna give you torque. Uh, here we go. Okay, so on the other side, we have voltage. So. Voltage will give you your speed. Your speed is proportional to your voltage. So once again, here is the same motor, curve one, curve two, and curve three, and each curve has progressively higher voltage. Be it, for instance, this could be 12, 24, 48. So you're gonna notice that because you're pushing the same amount of current in the beginning, it's going to basically maintain the same initial torque level. But what that higher voltage gives you is the ability to push current in at higher and higher speeds so you can maintain your torque out to a higher speed. So your voltage is going to give you speed. So if you want to go faster in your application, a higher voltage is always useful. So. You've maxed out your current and your voltage, so that's the set amount of power. Now that what we can do is we can start playing around with the motor connection method. So you see curves one, two, and three, all these curves have the same power. So this is where we can make a choice about the type of connection that we want to use for the motor, depending on whether you need high torque at low speed, whether you need high torque at high speed or some combination of those two. So depending on the speed and torque point that you're looking for, that can tell you which connection method might work for you. So here's an example. So typically with drivers, you're gonna have two types of drivers. You're gonna have a unipolar driver, uni being the fact that you can only send current in one direction. So your current is gonna come in through the center taps and out through the end taps. Then there's also a bipolar driver, which now means you have the current, you have the ability to send your current in both directions. So we have three different combinations, three connection methods. There's bipolar half coil, where the current path is only through a half a winding. This is identical to unipolar. So bipolar half coil and unipolar performance are gonna be identical. Then there's bipolar series performance. Now we're gonna put both winding halves in series. So what's going to happen, you're going to get double the resistance because you're going to put both halves in series. You're going to get double the number of turns of wire. Your torque is proportional to NI, so you're going to get more torque. But you're also going to have four times the inductance because your inductance is proportional to number of turns squared. So basically the bipolar series configuration, that's going to give you high torque at low speed. The contrast to that is to put the two winding halves in parallel, you're gonna get the bipolar parallel configuration. That is gonna give you, you're gonna be able to use more turns of wire because you get both halves, but now since you have inductors in parallel, you don't have to take that inductance hit. But you are going to pay for it with a little bit more current, so bipolar parallel is gonna be your high speed, high torque. You can see the chart where there you can look at this at your own time and you can see the conversion factors from unipolar to series and parallel or from series going to unipolar or parallel or back and forth. So again, these are what those configurations are gonna look like in the real world. So this bottom curve, this is going to be unipolar or bipolar half coil. So you see this is a very balanced winding. You get a fair amount of torque and a fair amount of speed. So this is a good starting point. If you have an application that needs more torque at low speeds, then you can go from half coil to bipolar series. And notice that your holding torque 
is going to go up by a factor of 40 percent, 1.4. So a common question is, you're using twice the number of turns of wire, why aren't I getting twice as much torque? Remember, I said for all these curves, the power is the same. So you'll notice that when you're going from unipolar to bipolar series, because you have twice as much resistance to keep the power I squared R, your current's gonna go down by 70%. So the net effect at low speed is 40% more torque. When we go in the other direction, let's say you have your unipolar curve or your bipolar half coil curve, you have the speed that you want, but you need more torque. What you can do is go to bipolar parallel and what that will do, it will allow you to put in more current in the motor. Instead of going from 0.7, for instance, you're now gonna go up by 40%, you're gonna get one amp. So that 40% in torque increase in current is gonna give you that 40% increase in torque all the way across the board. 